Welcome back. This is Traditional Muzzle Loader. My name is Steve Sells. Recently, a viewer asked if I would consider doing a video showing the way I load my muzzle loading shotgun. So today, our topic is all about the muzzle loading percussion double barrel shotgun. I'll show you how I load my gun for the optimum patterns and I'll go over different methods of loading these muzzle loading shotguns so you can discover the load that patterns best from your particular gun. There are some things you're going to need to load and operate your shotgun. You're going to need cleaning brushes, phosphor bronze brush, you're going to need a patch jag go on your ramrod or your cleaning rod and you're going to need a bore scraper to remove that last bit of fouling from the bore. You'll also need a nipple wrench and a nipple pick. And when you forget to put the powder in, you're going to need one of these patch and wad screws. You thread this onto your cleaning rod and you poke it down in and screw it into the cards and wads and pull those out. Then you can dump the shot out onto uh, into a cup or something if you want to save it and then reload your shotgun and this works without a lot of trouble. Now don't wait until you need this before you buy it because you're not going to be able to just walk into your local sporting goods store and find these things on the shelf. Go ahead and order it because when you do need this thing it's the only thing that's going to solve that problem. Okay, you're going to need adjustable measures for your powder and your shot. I prefer this one because it's marked in ounces and drams and helps me find the right load for my gun. And you'll also need cards and wads to separate your powder from your shot and to prevent the shot from running out of the barrel before you pull the trigger. Now we're ready to load and shoot our shotgun. We're going to need percussion caps, black powder, and shot. Most shotgun shooters you will use 2F powder. I know a few who shoot the larger gauges, the 10 gauge and 8 gauge, that like to use 1F. But for most of us with 20 gauge, 12 gauge guns, we shoot 2F powder. Now, check the nipples on your gun. I purchased my gun used, so I don't know if the nipples were the original ones or if they had been replaced, but I did find that they're too small for size 11 caps. When I um, shot the first barrel, the cap would usually fall off the nipple on the second barrel, but um, I tried size 10s, which most of us use on revolvers, and they fit perfectly. So the cones on those nipples are just a little smaller, and you know, check that when you get your gun. So how do we determine the amount of powder and shot to load in our gun? Well, my approach is to duplicate the loads that I prefer in a modern shotgun and duplicate that load in my muzzle loading shotgun. For example, when I shoot my modern over and under gun and I'm shooting skeet or trap or hunting small birds like quail and doves, I prefer a one and an eighth ounce load of number eight shot. So I want to duplicate that in my muzzle loader. So if I want to shoot an ounce and an eighth of shot, I set this measure for that amount and I use it to measure the powder. So the powder in volume is equal to the shot charge in volume. And this is known as an equal volume load, and that's a very good place to start off. Now you can adjust your patterns by adjusting the amount of powder compared to shot. So for example, that equal volume load is going to give us an ounce and an eighth of shot with about 72 grains of 2F powder. If you reduce that amount of powder by a few grains, it may tighten up your pattern. If you increase it by a few grains, it may open your pattern, spread it out a little larger. I found that in my particular gun, I get the best pattern with 80 grains of 2F 
and an ounce and an eighth of shot. And the only way you can determine that is by shooting on a pattern board or a large sheet of paper. Okay, so you can adjust and improve your pattern slightly by adjusting the balance of powder and shot. And again, a good place to start is with the equal volume. Now another load that I like to use in my modern gun is for pheasant, chucker, or rabbits and squirrels. I like to use a larger size shot, say sixes for those birds and fours for the fur animals. Because those shot, those larger pellets have fewer pellets per ounce, I increase my shot charge to an ounce and a quarter in, in a heavy field load in my modern gun. To duplicate that in my black powder gun, I simply set this measure for an ounce and a quarter of shot and fill it with the same amount of powder. Now, some experimenting on the pattern board, I found that if I increased the powder to 90 grains with an ounce and a quarter of shot, again, those produce the best patterns out of my particular gun. Now let's talk about wads and cards. First of all is, why do we even need those? Well, you have to have something between your powder and your shot. Otherwise, the shot will sift down into the powder and that's not going to work very well. The other thing is you have to have something on top of that shot to keep it from rolling out of the barrel. Now, you can purchase cards and wads or you can make your own and we're going to go over some of that. The purchase cards, this is a cardboard card that is typically called a nitro card. It's about an eighth of an inch thick and it goes on top of the powder. And the purpose of this is to seal the bore and also keep the shot from migrating down into the powder. On top of that, most of us use a cushion wad and this is a fiber wad. It could be paper fiber or felt fiber. This one happens to be pre-lubed. I know some shooters who purchase those not lubed at all so they can lube them the way they, they like to. Some of my clay target shooter friends use unlubed cushion wads and they actually have a little dish of water with a couple of drops of dish soap in it and they soak these things in there till they're sopping wet and then they load them down on top of the nitro card. Now the nitro card is going to fit tight enough that it will prevent any moisture from seeping past it into the powder charge unless your gun happens to have a pit in the bore right where this wad would sit then that will cause you problems. Now the shot goes on top of the cushion wad which is sitting on the nitro card and then over the shot to keep it from falling out they have these little thin paper cards that are typically called overshot cards and that is to, of course, keep the shot in the bore of the gun until you shoot it. Now, you can purchase those cards or you can make cards yourself by getting an arc punch. This, I think, if I remember correctly, I ordered from Dixie. But the 3 quarter inch size fits my 12 gauge bore and the 5 8 size fit my 20 gauge bore. Now some of my friends will use a punch like this and they'll punch cardboard wads out of empty breakfast cereal boxes and they may stack two or three of those on top of the powder in place of this heavier nitro card and they may put one or two of those over the shot. I have punched overshot cards out of index cards that will work fine but what I found produces the best patterns in my particular gun is to punch an overshot card out of a sheet of cork that I get from hobby stores. I really I believe the way that cork wad functions is I think it is it just completely disintegrates inside the bore of the gun when I fire the gun and there's nothing but very small dusty fragments of that 
to interfere with the shot column between the muzzle and the target. Occasionally, I think these paper wads in, in my gun would disrupt some of the pellets in that column of shot and cause some gaps in the distribution of pellets on the pattern board. Now, other folks use like wasp and hornet nest for wadding. Some of them use fiber wads, um, you know, fiber wads of wool or felt, or even the unprocessed fibers from, from flax, which we call tow. Um, some use waddings of paper. Um, I know historically some folks wadded their guns with scraps of wool from old blankets. So there's really a lot of room for you to experiment with cards and wads. And I think the card and wad combination has more effect on the pattern of a muzzleloader gun than anything else. And I think that's why I don't know any two shotgun shooters who load their guns in exactly the same way. Now I'm going to share with you the combination of wads and cards that I load in my shotgun that produce the best patterns. Now, I load the same exact card and wad combination for both loads that I use, both the ounce and an eighth and the ounce and the quarter. Both loads shoot very good patterns with the same combination of wads and cards. So, over the powder, I use the regular commercial nitro card. For the cushion wad, these are about a half an inch thick. I break them in half and I load half of the cushion wad on top of the nitro card and I put one of these little paper overshot cards on top of that cushion wad. Then my shot and on top of the shot I use the cork wad. Now this is the combination of wads and cards that give me the best pattern from my gun. Now, why do I use this thin paper card on top of the cushion wad? Well, I was getting good patterns without it, but about every fourth or fifth shot, I would get a what's called a donut hole pattern with a blank hole right in the center of the pattern where there were no pellets. I'll show you a photograph of one of those patterns that produced that donut hole. As you can see, there's not many pellets in the center of that pattern. You're not gonna break many targets with that. Now, what I thought might be the problem was I thought it might be the overshot wad or card that is in front of the shot column when it exits the muzzle, I thought that might be tumbling and disrupting the center of that pattern. And that's where I switched to the cork. And I got some better patterns with the cork. I'm thinking that the cork just disintegrates before it exits the muzzle. But still, about every third or fourth pattern I shot, I was seeing a donut hole. What I finally discovered was that without this little thin card on top of that wad, some of the shot pellets were embedding into the cushion wad. And that gave it enough weight and mass that that cushion wad was blowing through the shot column and cleaning out all the pellets in the middle of that shot column and leaving that hole in the middle of my patterns. When I started putting this paper card on top of that wad, all that disappeared and I was getting perfect patterns with every shot. So that's what works in my gun. Now, I have friends who use nothing but the cushion wad, but instead of tearing it in half, they tear it into four quarters. So they will put the powder in They'll put a fourth of this on top of the powder. They'll put a fourth of it over the shot. 
and that produces good patterns for them. I have uh, other friends who will load three-fourths of the wad on top of the powder without using these nitro cards. And just a thin piece of that nitro of this uh, wad on top of the shot. And that patterns well in their gun. It didn't pattern well in mine, but it works good in theirs. Now there's some other typical loadings that are really popular right now. I hear a lot of talk about them. I know a few people that use them, but they don't necessarily work in every gun. One of the loads that I tried was um, the, um, the way that a gentleman last name of Starr, who's an older gentleman that was um, a well-known black powder muzzle loading shotgun shooter, he uses only the thin cards. He puts three of them between the powder and shot and one of them over the shot. Now I tried that and it produced very even patterns. There were no gaps in the shot, but the pattern was much larger than what I wanted. So, you know, the, um, the pattern would cover a 30 inch circle at 15 or 20 yards. And that might be good if um, you're hunting really close birds like woodcock or maybe you're hunting really close cover. Um, that might be what you would want. You know, a, a big pattern with uh, a lot of small pellets, say number nines. But that wasn't exactly what I wanted out of my improved cylinder and modified barrels. Okay. Now there's another wide combination that seems to be, have a lot of people talking about it now. And that's called the Star Chief load. He loads his powder and puts a, an over, a, a nitro card on top of the powder, then is shot, and he loads a full sopping wet cushion card on top of the shot. And some people get really good patterns that way. I didn't. Okay? So those are just a few of the different ways to load wads and cards that I hear about and that I have tried. And you may find that one of those works very well in your gun. Now there is another method of loading that I know a couple of gentlemen that use something similar to this. They'll go ahead and use the nitro card on the powder. One of them will use the cushion wad and then half of his shot charge a thin card, the remaining half of the shot charge, and another thin card. This is what is known as a stacked load. I know a fellow that will use the nitro card, half of a cushion wad, and he'll stack his shot into three separate layers. He'll put a third of the shot, a card, a third of the shot, a card, a third of the shot, and then a card over it. And for his gun, that produces a very good pattern. My gun didn't seem to respond as well to it. So those are just a few different ways that I know of that produce good patterns in a particular shotgun. Again, I can't emphasize enough that every shotgun's a little different and every shotgun's going to throw patterns a little different. And the only way you can know how to load your gun to get good patterns is to shoot it on the pattern board. So we've discussed the components, the wads, the powder, the shot that goes into loading a muzzle loading shotgun. And it may sound pretty complicated. It's really not as complex as it sounds. So how do we determine which of these cards and wads in what combination do we need to load in our gun to get the best performance? Well, the only way you can know the performance of any shotgun, whether it's a muzzle loader or a modern shotgun, is to shoot on a pattern board and actually see what's coming out of your muzzle. Now I do my load development on the permanent pattern board at my local gun club. It's simply a large sheet of steel smeared with grease and you back up and shoot at whatever distance you're going to shoot and then you can see 
the marks that all the pellets leave in the grease. Then for the next shot, you simply get your paint roller and roll some more grease on there and shoot again. If you don't have access to a pattern board like that, or in my case, when I was patterning steel shot in my modern shotgun for ducks and geese, you're not allowed to shoot steel shot on that steel plate. You wouldn't want to do that anyway. So I use this paper. Now, I don't remember what this is called, but I got it from a home improvement store, and it's that heavy paper that you would put, you know, that a workman would put on your floor inside your house if he's doing any remodeling where he's going to walk so he doesn't mar up your floors. This roll is 36 inches wide. So what I do to when I'm using this is I cut off a square piece, 36 inches by 36 inches, and I tack it up or hang it on a wire to shoot patterns on. Now, when you're shooting all these patterns, you want to keep good records and good notes. Um, in a little notebook, I write down how much shot, how much powder, which cards and wads I loaded, and the order I loaded them in. And on paper, you can write that right on the paper. On the um, pattern board that works with the grease, I usually photograph those patterns, and I use a little sticky note and number them so that I can look at those photos later and say, okay, pattern number three here is the best looking pattern and it was shot with this combination of components. So that's how I determine the, the way I'm going to load the shotgun is by the patterns I get. Now you can get all scientific about measuring patterns. You can draw, you know, different size circles in the center of the paper. You can divide it into four sections. You can cut open or count all the pellets in your outs in an eighth of load and then count how many go into a circle a certain size. But there's a simpler way. And my approach to it is I shoot my patterns from the same distance that I expect to shoot my targets or my birds. And that's how I decide on the choke in a gun to use. You know, when I'm hunting quail over a pointing dog, my, my shots are going to be from, you know, just under foot out to maybe 40 yards. The average is about 30 yards. So when I pattern my guns, I pattern that improved cylinder barrel at 30 yards. And I find that if I back up about seven yards, that's going to be where I will pattern my, in my modified choke barrel. And I expect those patterns to be about the same size and look almost identical. And that holds true for my over and under gun, and it holds true for my side-by-side -side muzzleloader gun. Now, if I wanted to shoot my targets further out, like maybe handicap trap or past shooting ducks or geese at 40, 45 yards, I certainly would want a tighter pattern. I'd want to use a, you know, a full choke at least, and I would shoot those patterns at that distance, say 40 yards, 45 yards. So um, that's my approach to shooting patterns. I don't worry about counting the holes. What I look for is a round pattern, and all the shot pellets are equally distributed within that entire circle. I don't want to see gaps between pellets that a bird could fly through. I don't want to see an elongated pattern with no shot on the sides. I, I don't want to see a flat pattern, you know, horizontally with, with no pellets up here or down there. And, and I don't want the edge of the pattern to be sketchier than the center of the pattern. So I'm looking for a pattern approximately 30 inches in diameter at whatever distance I expect to shoot my target or my bird, that all those shot pellets are equally distributed amongst that entire 30 inch part of that target. Now I'll show you a photograph of uh, what I consider to be a good pattern from my muzzle loading shotgun shot at 30 yards with the improved cylinder choke and my one and an eighth ounce load of number eight shot. Here is the type of pattern I'm looking for. It's a good round dense pattern 
there's no gaps in that pattern that a bird could possibly slip through. But the important thing to, to remember is when you're experimenting with the loads, the cards, the wads, and how you put them into the gun is to keep good notes because when you find that good pattern, you don't want to be confused about, well, what did I put in there that time? Okay, so patterning is extremely important. I haven't explained the reason why some shooters load sopping wet cushion wads in their shotgun. Well, as we all know, when you fire a black powder shotgun, there is residue left in the bore, and we call that fouling. And after a few shots, that fouling is going to build up and it's going to be difficult to push your wads and cards down the muzzle to load your next shots. Now these guys that use the soaping wet wads like that, usually they're just strictly clay target shooters and they're loading their gun at a loading bench and they have a box that contains everything they need. Most of them will have a little container of water with some dish soap or moose milk or whatever solvent they like and they're soaking the wads in that before they load them. I, saw a different approach when I attended one of the big clay target shoots. Some of those gentlemen were loading their shot powder and wads just like we always do, but they were spraying some solvent down the muzzle on top of their load. And they were not having to wipe the bores of their guns between shots when they were reloading. Whereas I was, I was having to put a, a damp patch down each barrel after every two to four shots so that loading the gun didn't become too difficult. Well, what they told me at the break was that as long as your wads and cards fit the, the bore of the gun snugly, and there's no pits in that area where the wads and cards sit, that moisture can't migrate down into the powder to cause any problems. And with the fouling kept damp, the wads and cards cleared it out every time you fired the gun. So I started doing the same thing. I started using moose milk and after I loaded my load I would spray a couple of spritzes down the bore and that keeps the fouling moist and soft and then when I fire the gun the wads and cards clear the fouling and there's no need to wipe the bores between loadings. Now on the website traditionalmuzzleloader.com, I have the recipe to make up a large batch of moose milk, which is what I use for an all-purpose cleaner and swabbing the bores with. But if you don't want to make an entire batch, you can purchase the little two-ounce spray bottles of moose milk on Amazon, and I'll put a link at the end of this video to the location of that where you can order it yourself. I've already wiped the bores to get all the oil out and I've popped two or three caps to clear the oil out of the nipples. Now before you load your shotgun, make sure that the half cock notch is secure, that the hammer cannot fall when you pull on the trigger or bump it because that's the only safety device that one of these guns has. So now I'm going to show you how I carry all my supplies and load when I'm actually hunting in the field. First thing is I put the hammers down. I carry my powder in a flask and I pour it into the measure before I put it into the barrel. So for my target loads here I'm using 80 grains of 2F powder. And since you we're loading two barrels, decide on a system and stick with it so you don't double charge one barrel. I like to load my right barrel first. So I put the powder down the barrel on the right side. And then the powder charge down the left barrel. And the next thing that goes over is a over powder or a nitro card.
If these are difficult to start past the choke, you can always start them edgewise and then turn them. Then with the ramrod and the gun, I seat those on the powder charge. Next is a cushion wad. I use half of the wad with an overshot card on top of it. Right barrel and the overshot card. Now when you seat this, it can create some air pressure in the board and that can blow the wads back up in your ramrod out. So keep a hold of that. Now I carry my shot in a shot snake. There's two kinds, an English and an Irish. This is the Irish type. I like it because it has more adjustable measures than the English and it also dumps the shot into a spout. So you can pour it right down the barrel. I find that this snake will hold size eight shot without leaking, but number nine shot seems to leak through. So I have my shot down both barrels and now I put a cork wad over the top to hold those in place. and then I can return the ramrod to the thimbles in the gun. So I won't cap the gun until I am actually on the shooting line or until I'm in the field ready to hunt. So in the field when you're actually hunting, you're going to be carrying your gun cap, but in half cock. So you have to practice good muzzle control. Don't let your muzzle swing across anything you don't want to destroy. Typically, I don't cock the hammers back until the bird flushes or until the dog goes on point. You ready? Oh! Now that's a dead bird. Let's see if we can get this second bird. Pull! I think we got it. Now one thing you need to be really careful of when you're loading a double barrel gun is to make sure you keep up with which barrel's already loaded. You don't want to load the same barrel twice. So whatever system you decide to use, whether you're going to use the system of loading one barrel completely and then the other barrel completely, or loading them both in sequence at the same time. Just don't get confused about that. Another thing that really concerns me about muzzle loading double barrel guns is when you fired one barrel and you will want to reload that barrel while the second barrel is still loaded, be sure you remove the cap from that nipple and put the hammer down on that loaded barrel. Things can happen and that wouldn't be good. So again on top of the powder, nitro cards that seal the bore. And you can tell that it's loading a lot stiffer after firing it because of that fouling. 
So on this loading, I'll show you a little trick I've learned to help keep that down. Okay, cushion wad next. Overshot card on top of the cushion wad. That goes much easier. I've already cleared the fouling with that cardboard. In case I haven't mentioned, I'm loading 80 grains of 2F with an ounce and an eight, number eight shot. And you know the only difference between a modern shotgun and this shotgun is that it takes a little longer to load. It's just as effective as a regular 12 gauge. It's just as lethal as a regular 12 gauge. It just puts up a cloud of smoke. It smells good. <laughs> Here's the little trick to keep that fouling from big building up and becoming even harder to lose, to uh, load, is I squirt a couple of squirts of moose milk down there on top of the load. That keeps the fouling moist, and now when I fire the gun again, it'll blow all that fouling out with those cards and wads. All right, so we're going to cap it up, see if we can break another target. Pull it. If you're new to muzzle loading shotguns or you're considering getting started, I may have made this sound a lot more complicated than it really is. All you really need to do when you get your gun is to start with an equal volume load, whatever combination of cards and wads you decide to use, and shoot a couple of patterns. If those patterns are satisfactory to you, and they usually will be, that's all you need to know. However, if you want to improve your patterns, I've given you a lot of different ideas and a lot of different loading methods for you to try. So good luck with your shotgun, be safe, and until next time, shoot straight and remember to keep your powder dry. Ready? Pull. Oh.